Evening Freaks, I'm coming at you in the dark tonight because we're going to do a special unboxing of the Black Light Playing Cards by the company Island Dogs. Now, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but um, every time I get a new deck, I like to share them here on the channel. Just so if you're curious, you want to pick up reading or maybe you've been a reader for a long time and you're just interested in some new decks, you can check them out before you invest the money in them. Um, also, I uh, sometimes am able to point out what are good starter decks for people that are just beginning to explore reading. So i um, happy to bring that in and support people as they dive into that process of exploring their own intuition through getting to work with these tools, getting to work with the cards. I love working with playing cards myself because I feel like it allows my intuition to come even more forward. It allows me to open up into the flow and really just kind of channel the information because I'm not getting drawn in by any particular symbolism. I like that it works with numbers, you know, and the numbers kind of like unlock the keys. Um, it helps me arrive at the right equation for what's happening in the situation. Um, and so I couldn't resist this deck when I saw it, the black light playing cards. I mean, come on. Um, I don't have a black light right now. I will be getting one, but I think this will give you a good idea. I got the lights down really low um, and I have a colored ring light going. So this is kind of cool because it allows you to see the different colors. I got it on uh, changing color mode right now. So it can give you an opportunity to see how the colors pop. Uh, with different kind of lights and so you can see even without having a black light you still get a lot of glow off of these so what we're going to do is i'm just going to open them up i'm going to give you a you know a little look at the deck and um then we're going to put them into action and do a uh what's up for the next 48 hours for the collective read okay um, and it will be a timeless read, you know, but uh, maybe these things will start to kind of come into your sphere in the next 48 hours. I do want to go ahead and just uh, give this deck a little love. I'm going to bring in some spirit candy. I got a cigar here. Uh, I like to work with tobacco a lot. My ancestors really appreciate it. And the spirits love it. It keeps them happy, okay? Especially the ones I like to work with. They like their tobacco. Um, and I also like to bless up my cards with it. I think it's important to uh, smoke cleanse your decks on the regular. You know, some people don't think it's a big deal, but especially if you're getting into reading and you're going to be reading for a lot of people, you know, those energies from your past reads or even other people who maybe touch your cards, um, get their hands on them, you know, it can transfer the energy and that can kind of muddy your readings. And it can also confuse the energy. So it helps just to kind of clear it out, just like it's helpful for us to, uh, you know, clear our own energy field. I like to spread this love around here a bit, okay? I got some honey incense going for Ye Ye Oshun. I love the Orishas. Um, I work with the Orishas a lot. Uh, they just really feel close to them in my heart and soul. And I think that's... Um, that's also why I really like the uh, the playing cards for divination. They're just straight up, no chaser. And I find that's kind of what it's like when you're working with the Orishas uh, and the kind of energies I like to work with. You know, they're they're very like to the point, very direct, and that speaks to me. So let's just dive in. All right, it's gonna be fun. This is what the back of them looks like, okay? So a lot of fun. You can see with the different changing uh, lights how the colors pop and how the colors even change color, right? It's really kind of cool. Um, they're purple, blue, pink, and green normally are those colors, but you can see how they really change depending on the color of light that's reflecting on them. And I think this is kind of fun, you know? It gives a little light play. And then you can see, um, this is what the other sides look like. Oh, let's turn those over the right way. Ace of hearts in reverse. Are some of you, uh, you know, having a different uh, view of a relationship? Are you all feeling a little moody? Are you feeling nostalgic? Are you looking back at the past? 
Are you feeling forlorn collective with that uh, Virgo full moon that came in? Let me tell you with the um, Saturn going into Pisces as well. Let me tell you, man, um, it's really interesting that that was a difficult full moon. At least it was for me. It was for me. I'm mostly air and fire, though. So maybe that has something to do with it. But it really felt like there was just such a such a buildup of energy uh, emotionally and expansively just in the higher consciousness states. And yet I felt this like it was almost like this restrictive, like kind of wanting to contain it. I think from that Saturn influence that I was just like, oh, I don't like this. I just, you know, I didn't I didn't dig it. It just kind of kept the energy so contained. And that was almost aggravating. So look at the Joker there. I dig it. I dig it. This Joker is pretty cool. It's got a little hangman vibe going. It's also got a little bit of that like uh, Kali Ma vibe going, you know, just with the stance. I notice these like little details. Pretty cool. All right, we got, you know, a couple, couple different Jokers in the deck. I like to work with the Jokers. Uh, for me, it's like kind of like the divine play of life. You know, some people throw them out. You know, some people use them as stand-ins when they lose other cards. Um, but I just kind of like having them as like a wild card influence. I also like using playing cards for giving readings because I, um, you know, don't just go by the numerology, but you know, also uh, it just keeps it really simple. You know, hearts uh, are all about love, the emotional, you know. Um, diamonds are all about money, okay. Uh, spades are all about troubles, strife, the hard times and bitter tea, okay. And clubs are all about um, achievement, um success, ambition, you know, um, business too comes into it. Very much fire energy. Okay. But this gives you a good feel for these cards. It looks like, uh, you know, each, I wonder if that's going to be the way it is. Yeah. It looks like each suit has their own color. Okay. So, um, the hearts are pink. I like that. Diamonds are purple. All right. I think that's, that's very fitting for diamonds to be purple, uh, because it does kind of invoke that energy, right? You think of diamonds, you envision diamonds on a crown, you know, uh, diamonds are also, you know, <laughs> a girl's best friend, a little Marilyn Monroe coming in from when I did my uh, session with her, my late night talking tarot. I got to do another one of those soon. I'm telling you, um, the next one that was really wanting to come in is kind of a tie. So maybe you all can help me decide, but I had two different ones coming in very strongly. Jim Morrison already voted for Janice Joplin. Janice Joplin was really uh, calling to be brought in on one of those late night talking tarot uh, channeling sessions. Um, and then the other is Jimi Hendrix. All right. So you all let me know which one you think I should go for of those two. It's got to be one of those two. Okay. Clubs. Ooh, look at how those pop, man. I wonder what, is that green normally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. It's that kind of Halloween green, you know, that like sort of day glow green. He's giving you a look at all of these cards. <clears throat> yeah, so playing cards, you know, um, they're a good place to start, I think, with readings where you're wanting to explore more of your abilities to channel. That's what I would say. Uh, because they don't give you a lot to work with, right? Okay. You got like basic details. Are 
playing cards is true cardomancy like tarot? No, it's not. There are similarities, okay? There's parallels, but there's a, a whole different way to work with divination when it comes to playing cards. Um, they have different associations, all right? Um, you'll also find that their, um, their delivery, like messages that they deliver are a lot more blunt, all right? <laughs> they don't pretty anything up. They just tell them like it is. And that's why I like them. That's why I like them personally. You know, I don't like a lot of fluff. Um, I like things to be very direct. Right? Coming in with that spades energy. So perfect. All right. The spades are blue. Okay. So you can see, you know, the color variation you get there. With the different colored lights. It's really cool. I like it. I love this kind of stuff. You know, I want to do a lot more late night stuff. Um, I am going to be, you know, doing something special to launch spring uh, here with kind of a community uh, level up journey that I'll be presenting. A of karma of sorts, okay? Um, but I definitely want to kind of like start to focus more of my energy to uh, being a creature of the night. <laughs> It's when I like to do my work. I'm not, I'm not big for the morning time. I, I like this vibe, you know, um, that was my whole, my whole MO when I started this channel is I wanted it to be, um, I drop in with you at night. I chill out with you. We hang out, we talk, we talk about weird shit. We go way out there. Um, everything's welcome to come to the table. <laughs> Just as I said, that 12 on the clock, you know, I like that midnight hour. I love it. It's like the rest of the world's asleep and everything else comes to life and the freaks come out at night. And I like the freaks, all right? That's who I want to hang out with. So let's see what's coming in for my freaks. What's coming in for the collective this week? We're going to break these in and, um, no, let's not say this week, but maybe it'll set the template for this week. Uh, although we are kind of at that hump day point, aren't we? You know, time is just a belief construct, man. I don't go by time around here. Uh, really, the reads are timeless on this channel. Even when you see a read that says, you know, your, it's your February reading, it's just like these are themes. This is the energy hovering around you right now. You may be seeing some of that stuff come in right now. But it uh, kind of is like an igniting point is what I want you to consider it. It's igniting uh, these plays of energy in your life. And you'll start to see these themes coming in. But the full development, the full manifestation of it, you know, it takes some time to play out. Um, and I don't really put a time limit on that either. How long does it take? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think in general, though, you know, when you're working with card readings... Time is one of those kind of slippery things. You can't usually get super, super specific, but I found over the years that I've been a reader and I have been a reader now for 30, 32 years, 32 years. I've been uh, a professional reader. I've been um, doing this kind of work. And I found that you can get pretty good with it. You can get pretty accurate. I find most readings, you know, within about, you know, like a six month period, you, you're, you're seeing that stuff play out. Um, but I find most of the immediate themes are accessible, you know, when you do it. So we're going to say 48 hours for this one for you collective. What is coming in for the collective? Over the next 48 hours, what should they be live to? What's coming the collective's way over the next 48 hours, spirit? Let's see, shall we? Bottom of the deck energy. Woo! Ten of diamonds, all right? So what I'm really getting from this is you all are in manifestation mode. Uh, a lot of you did some manifestation work with that full moon that came in. You saw it as a real opportunity. I mean, it was. We had that Virgo full moon. Uh, we had the Pisces energy, you know, building up to that, especially with the Saturn 
Uh, moving into Pisces, it's the perfect time for goal setting. It's the perfect time for, uh, you know, making making stuff happen. You know, not just paying it lip service, but actually uh, getting down to the nuts and bolts of making it come into being, right? Doing the work to see it manifest. I think a lot of you have started something uh, with this full moon. I think you know what you want to invest in. I think you uh, have your eyes on the prize, so to speak. Uh, you're not going to just be sitting there, you know, visioning about it, uh, oming away, <laughs> working with your affirmations. Like, you're actually getting down to doing the work. Um, I got a lot of you are really focusing on your health. Maybe you're starting to feel that um, that itch after the long, you know, kind of doldrums of the winter season. You feel the approach of spring. Uh, you want to lighten up a little bit. You've been feeling a little bit heavy. Uh, I think you're starting to spot the correlation that, you know, health truly is wealth. That's, you know, a saying for a reason. The reason why we say health is wealth, it, it doesn't really have to do with, well, if you get sick, then you're not going to be able to work and then you're not going to be able to make money. I mean, you could really look at it that way, but it goes a lot deeper than that. It's actually more that when you are not operating, rating at your like maximum vitality your channels clogged you know you can't you can't bring through a quality energy that can really manifest your desires from that place so i feel like you're putting a lot of work into this right now um this is a time of manifestation uh this would be a good time for you to work with any kind of manifestation work you could even do something as simple as getting a seven day candle um, holding your intention, you know, you could do, do it for a few minutes in the morning, a few minutes before bed, uh, just to fuel your fire, you know, keep that uh, candle lit if you can. You can do it like vigil style, just to keep your eyes on that prize, on that light at the end of the tunnel and what you're calling in. Um, and just do some meditative focus, you know, focusing on your vision while staring into the flame that's called Trotok. It's a very powerful uh, way to stimulate also Ajna, the third eye chakra, all right? 17, 11 on the clock. Yeah, it'll bring you into an alignment with your manifestations and it'll really amplify the power around what you're trying to call in and help you see what habits, what things you're doing um, in your day-to-day -day, like kind of routine that are maybe kind of knocking you out of that power, not uh, allowing you to best harness and focus your energy to hit the mark with that goal. All right, <laughs> a lot coming in there already. I think I'm going to like these cards. Okay, what's coming in for the collective over the next 48 hours? So, yeah, maybe do a little manifestation work over these next 48 hours. You know, uh, just kind of make a make a choice to uh, focus your energy in a particular direction for this lunar cycle leading up to the new moon in Aries, the initiation point on the 21st of this month. You know, and just see how much can you shift? How come... How much can you make happen in that time period? And, you know, maybe start harmonizing with the moon a bit, working with the moon, uh, you know, sort of letting go of the old cycle with the full moon and, um, you know, setting your target in a new direction and uh, seeing how much growth you can achieve uh, during that time. It's great if you have like a goal that's like, okay, by new moon, I'm going to launch this or uh, by new moon, I will have reached this point, which will take me to... The next step in the new cycle, you know, um, just harmonizing with those energies. Full moon is about bringing things to fruition, but it's also about letting go. And new moons are all about new beginnings. New moons are a great time to really launch something, start something, you know. you got a business project or uh, some kind of um, album you want to release or um, some kind of show or opening you want to do or some... Um, some kind of competitive event, like a sporting event or anything that, you know, um, you're participating in. Great to uh, set your goals and uh, set forth actual action in that direction uh, with the new moon. And during the waning moon after uh, full moon is a great time to uh, sort of fuel things on an inward level while also taking personal steps, you know. Think of it as doing the inner work and laying down the foundation during that waning moon cycle. And the new moon cycle is when you really let it be seen. You know, you present it to the world. Okay, we've got a few cards here. We've got a couple that are face down. So we're going to um, look at those in a minute. We're going to let those kind of be a grand reveal. And we're going to look at what we got here. Okay, so we have the eight of spades. 
the six of diamonds and the four of clubs. Crossing that is the six of hearts. Okay, so I feel like what's really at the forefront of your consciousness is that there's somebody you're really wanting to come together with, but you don't understand how you can kind of bridge the gap. Like you and this person are not on the same page. You can't seem to find the way to bring balance in a connection that means a lot to you. Uh, this is sort of front and center. Um, a soulmate can be anybody who really has a profound effect on your heart. Somebody you really feel like, you know, your energies have been with each other for a long time. We all, we all know those connections. You meet somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, it's you. It's you again. Sometimes it's like that, right? It's you again. Uh, some of you may be dealing with that a little bit. It might be a little bit of both, actually. I'm kind of picking that up. A lot of you might be dealing with kind of um, a soulmate nemesis uh, sort of storyline that I feel like has karmic implications. It's like past life stuff. 21, 22 on the clock. Oh my God. I think that is the case. I'm just really picking it up with the eight of uh, swords vibe. Maybe you felt restricted. Maybe you feel like something's blocking uh, you're coming into union, coming into alignment with a soulmate um, or something, you know, this can also be something that you're really wanting to call in uh, that you feel very, very called to do just, you know, on a, almost on a spiritual level. Maybe you received a call from spirit, like something big that you're supposed to be uh, working on a project, uh, a book you're supposed to write, you know, um, some kind of um philanthropic, you know, establishment that you're meant to uh, found something like this, you know, maybe it's a calling, but there's something that like, you're really trying to come into alignment with and you, you want to be able to do this, but it feels like something is thwarting uh, this coming together. Um, and it's very front and center for you. There's some kind of block that needs to be removed. There's some kind of obstructing force that needs to be overcome in order for this thing to come into alignment. I do believe that there is a help available. I think you need to pay attention. I think you need to pay attention in the sense that like what you have been focusing on is directing your energy into the wrong direction. It's like you've been focused too much on the obstacle rather than focusing on the solution. And it was 22.55 on the clock when I said that. This is a building block in order for you to affect change in your situation and get things moving to bridge the gap where it needs to be bridged. I feel like this is really important, okay? So stop paying attention to the drama and stop listening to what people are saying about your situation. This is what's going to uh, affect change for you. This is about you looking at what can you do individually, all right? Uh, a good step is to first, you know, um, stop feeling penned in or held in by uh, others' perceptions of your situation, others' opinions, um, others' involvement, you know, in some cases. There's a need to, like, take off the blinders and really look at the reality of your situation and understand that if something is really feeling restricted or stuck or you're having difficulty bringing something into alignment, that might be cause for deeper reflection, okay? When things are meant to come into alignment with us, there is no need. There is no need to kind of like force a fit, right? It's just natural. That being said, um, there can be jealous forces. There can be um, disruptive forces that will intercede, that can cause problems, you know, um, and interfere. And those are usually pinpointed by the people that make you feel confused when they come around. Uh, eight of uh, spades is very much an energy of kind of like being too much in your head. And a lot of that can come from other people talking in your ear, um, inserting themselves in your situation. So do be on the lookout for this over the next 48 hours. Uh, just pay attention. You know, pay attention. Who is, who's kind of like a... 
eavesdropping in on your life, you know, who is um, sort of trampling over boundary lines a bit? Where are you feeling um, more confused, more unclear, you know? Um, who, who are you around when that energy comes in? Uh, I think you're going to pinpoint something that's going to give a key about what you need to do to sort of set yourself free from this limiting, restricting influence that is keeping this alignment from happening. And for some of you, it's something inside of yourself. It's like a behavior that you keep acting out or a choice you keep making. Um, some way that you're not listening to your intuition, that you're not trusting your own wisdom, which is kind of always front and center. That's the block. Um, there's something that needs to be transformed here. There's something that needs to be released. So pay attention and you're going to find out where the saboteur is. For some of you, it's in your circle and it's time to kind of reevaluate your circle and really understand um, who's truly there for you and who is there just to kind of do uh, intel or see, um, you know, see what you got going on because maybe there's a little bit of a competition kind of error. You know, I say that because we have the five of clubs energy, okay? That is very much this, um, this competitive kind of vibe. I think what you're coming into alignment with, 26, 22 on the clock, I would say definitely so. I think you're coming into alignment with something that's like a coveted position. And can this be in a relationship with a person? Absolutely. It absolutely can be. Um, I, it can also be with a coveted opportunity or, um, you know, a coveted role or a coveted position, you know, uh, a, a job opportunity or um, some platform to really step up to, step into, you know, a new role. Um, this may be something that a lot of other people want, you know, uh, a lot of other people desire. This may be a person, I mean, there is this, uh, there is this six of hearts energy. So there is big soulmate energy here. I do pick up a strong vibe for a lot of you. It's like that kind of lover's energy. It's about a choice. Are you going to uh, let people have that much sway over, um, you know, your choices of the heart? You can't, you know, you have to really stay true to your path and your purpose. And also remember that What's your path will not create confusion within you. It will always be a solid yes. So anytime we get thrown into this place of confusion or there's some kind of like competitive element involved um, or thwarting the energy involved, you know, that's causing these blockages, then we know it's time to pull the energy back and look within for a moment and go, okay, let me get clear here for a moment. Almost always the solution is to just let go, you know, let go and flow with the energy and how it's speaking to you. This might be coming in very strongly for air sign collective with the Jack of Spades here, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. All right. I also feel like something is going to come through and be illuminated over these next 48 hours. It's going to really highlight what's been blocking your progress. Um, let's have a look here and just see, uh, what the top of the deck energy is. Yeah. <laughs> Seven of spades. All right. You're going to be finding out what's been working against you. What's been sabotaging you. There is something, uh, that somebody has been kind of doing behind the scenes, getting away with, uh, that's been thwarting. All right. Let's get a cut of the deck energy here and just get a little bit of a further clue. We got five of diamonds here, and on the opposite side, we got the Joker in reverse, okay? This energy came in big time with the full moon read. This is a time of flipping it up and reverse it, and where there's been this kind of like playing around, you know, trying to manipulate things on a subversive level to cause you loss, loss of something that you're meant to come into alignment with loss of an opportunity, interference due to competitiveness. It's total role reversal time, all right? Checkmate. 